Praise the Lord, precious saints, and welcome to another daily prophetic utterance to start your day. The Lord is saying today, my child, it is just as important for you to know that I am a God that loves and came to die for your sins and will provide for you all your needs as it is that I am the same God that will return a second time and judge the living and the dead. Yes, for a time is coming when many will have to flee from the great wrath that is to come, my child. Yes, I desire mercy and that none would perish, but it is vital to seek my mercy and forgiveness while it is still day. When you cry out for my mercy, I have promised that I will hear you and deliver you. It is my desire to pour out my spirit upon a remnant church that is so hungry and thirsty for my righteousness. Yes, I desire to revive my church and bring in a great harvest never seen before. For my wrath is being held back, and though it is at the door, and it will come at the appointed time, soon to enter every ungodly individual. So by getting into the lifeboat in this hour, right now, through sincere repentance is a must, and faith in me as your Lord and personal Savior. For surely you are within a stone's throw of the greatest event since the beginning of the church, which will also commence my wrath and my continued judgment. That's right, but my voice cries out across the earth. These words I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. For my desire is that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. My coming is sooner each day that passes, my child. Are you ready for that day? Are you ready for my appearing? For you must be ready, for when I come, it will be an hour when you do not know, my child. The day of my wrath is approaching closer and closer, and many are still sleeping even within my church, for it is coming swiftly and surely and even much sooner than most expect. My wrath is the substance of divinely breathed prophecies that have been spoken throughout the ages and will certainly be fulfilled in the days ahead, my child. Though I have promised my remnant bride a way of escape of this great tribulation that is to come. Many are sitting still on the fence and stepping over the side of compromise and dabbling into lust, pornography, adultery, fornication, drunkenness, jealousy, gossiping, sorcery, idolatry, lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Yes, just to name a few, only hoping that I will return at a time that they are standing on the prepared side of the fence. But when the day of my appearing comes, in the twinkling of an eye, it will come come at a sudden pace, that you must be prepared prior to the event and must be found blameless, covered under my blood. Yes, it is an event that many millions are anticipating, which is the great day and capturing away of my remnant spotless bride. It also will be a dreadful commencement and continuation of my prophesied judgments upon the earth, the judgments that will be released least within those seven seals, the seven trumpets, and the seven bowls that have been revealed and spoken in my word. This same event is a matter of great dread to other millions, but it is also going to result in the most mournful separation in all history of mankind. It will be a day of separation of the foolish virgins and the wise virgins that kept their oil full. My child, it will happen in the most sudden and mysterious manner where workers in the same field and sleepers in the same bed will forever be separated from each other. There will be laborers 
parted from their foremen, and foremen parted from their laborers, wives parted from their husbands, and husbands parted from their wives, friends parted from friends, brothers parted from sisters, children parted from their parents, and parents parted from their children. What a weeping and wailing it will be when I separate the pure bride from the foolish church in the capturing rapture to come, my child. This world that is controlled by Satan, the prince of this world, has already approached a tremendous crisis point like never before seen in the history of mankind, my child. A great many things that are happening in the world today are just an indication that my prophets and apostles and my words that I spoke to you while I was with you are, were foretold and now coming to pass. Yes, because there is about to be an end of this dispensation of my grace that will make way for the approaching end of days and tribulation and great tribulation that is about to commence at my snatching away of my bride. My child, the corruption and wickedness of this world will reach an increased level like never before that will soon spill over into my judgment. And as what was foretold by my servants of old, where evil has become good and good has become evil, is being fulfilled in your very time. The outcry of innocent blood of aborted babies that has been shed all over this earth speaks for my judgment. That's right, the where perversion has increased worse than it was even as the day of Sodom and Gomorrah. The violence that has increased and is so widespread with many hearts becoming so cold and loveless, just as it was before the flood, so shall it be a sign for my soon return. The wickedness of man is great in the earth, my child, and the earth is corrupt before me and filled with violence, that time is ripe for my judgment to fall on the earth once more in the midst of all wickedness, corruption, lust, violence, crime, disorder, vice, and ungodliness. The birth pangs have taken place all over the earth with earthquakes, floods, cyclones, and every natural disaster happening more frequently, my child, and momentum is picking up and it will one day be loosened upon the sinful and wicked world without any mercy upon all those that have rejected me. Must I continue to be always patient and merciful, whereas there is an increase in sin every hour? Never. The world is fast approaching the greatest crisis this world has ever known, my child. But as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be at my soon coming and return. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and they never, not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of my soon return and wrath and judgment of mine be. I have warned you of the distress of nations with perplexity that men's hearts shall fail them when they start to see these things. I am now giving my last warnings to every man and woman, boy and girl, irrespective of parents or disobedient parents or disobedient children, thieves, murderers, homosexuals, fornicators, drunkards, idolaters and unbelievers by saying that the great day of my wrath is to come and who shall be able to stand on that day? Therefore repent now while there is still time, for it is appointed unto man to stand before me and give an account of each person's life as my remnant church cries out for mercy on the behalf of a church and a fallen church and on behalf of nations. I will hear from heaven and I will visit those that are thirsty for my spirit in this hour. Cry out to me today, day and night on behalf of your loved ones, on behalf of those in your community, on behalf of your neighbors.
nations, that I will pour out my spirit, that I will bring revival to you, bring revival to your home, that you may enter into the ark. Yes, that you and your family would enter into the ark. And also as Noah was saved with his family, so shall you be saved from what is the wrath that is yet to come. Be at peace this day as you seek me to know me more and to love me more each and every day. Shalom. Praise the Lord, precious saints. The Bible says according to 1 Thessalonians 4 verses 16 to 17, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. The rapture is the sudden supernatural removal of all children of God from the earth that are found blameless upon that day. At the rapture, Jesus Christ will appear in the eastern sky and call all his children up to heaven, leaving all the sinners and unbelievers behind and those that were not found blameless on that day. It will happen in two stages. The first being all the dead in Christ. The pre-rapture will rise from graves in their glorified bodies. And the second stage will be all the true believers that are alive will then go up to be with him on the clouds. Jesus will not set foot on the earth at the rapture. He will just appear in the eastern sky and call all children of God that have made themselves pure and blameless on that day to go to be with him. The rapture is a wonderful thing for Christians. The rapture will be yet another very gracious act of God's love towards his children. God loves his children so much that he will remove us from this wicked world to safe place in heaven before his wrath is released upon the earth. See, God will not allow the beast to devour his saints and will remove them so that they will go to be with him at the wedding feast of the Lamb. And according to Revelation 19 verse 6 to 7, it says, And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, as the sound of many waters, as the sound of mighty thundering, saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigns. Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his his wife has made herself ready. Hallelujah. The supernatural removal of godly individuals from earth is not unknown in scripture because we see with the story of Enoch according to Genesis 5 verse 21 to 24. So the bypassing death according to Hebrews 11 5 it says by faith Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him away, had snatched him away, had caught him away. And before he was taken, he had this testimony that he please God. See, it is consistent with God's dealing with his people in the Old Testament to believe that the church will be removed from the world before the great tribulation. Hallelujah. God did not send the flood until Noah and his family were safe in the ark. He did not destroy Sodom until Lot was taken out. See, when Noah got into the ark, the Bible says that God himself closed the door. Now, when we go to Matthew 25, verse 13, we also see the same account. We see that God himself, he will close the door and the foolish virgins that will come to the door will not be able to end in because the door itself shall be shut. See, the rapture of the church, it will take place and those that have prepared themselves will be ready for that day. Hallelujah. See, his holy 
blameless, righteous bride will know right before it happens, as they will see the times and hear the trumpet call. Because according to 1 Corinthians 15, verses 50. Two, it says, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and shall be changed. Hallelujah. See, the world cannot hear God's voice and therefore does not hear the warning. The world will not know when the second coming will happen either because the rapture is not the second coming of Jesus and it is not the end of the world. It will be the beginning of the terrible seven year tribulation for those that are left behind. The rapture is God's removing his children to the place place of safety while his wrath is being poured out upon the sinful and unbelievers and those who remain upon the earth. Anyone who has not accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and living a sanctified life holy and set apart from this world will not be raptured. That's right. They will not be raptured and just believing in God won't be good enough to be able to enter in because the Bible says, according to James 2.19, it says the devil believes and demons believe and they tremble. So we must fear the Lord. Jesus has saved us from our sins and from the wrath of God. Since pure Christians are redeemed from the wrath of God, true Christians will not be experiencing the tribulation which is the wrath of God. According to 1 Thessalonians 5.9 it says, For God did not appoint us to wrath but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. True salvation will and true Christians will be raptured before the tribulation begins. The world, the earth and the sinners will still be here and they will be going to experience the wrath of God. The wrath of God will be the consequences of those who have rejected Jesus Christ and God's way of doing things. So uh, some denominations don't even believe in a hell, but there is a hell. And even though God loves us all, there are consequences to sin and rejecting Jesus Christ as our Lord God and Savior. That's right. He died on the cross as a sacrifice for our sins. He rose from the dead and he now lives in heaven giving us access to God. Jesus is alive and our only access to the one true God. Hallelujah. And just because some people or denominations do not believe in the rapture does not mean it was not going to happen. The rapture is going to happen. Whether people believe it or not, he knows how to protect the righteous and punish only those who deserve it. Hallelujah. See, the word rapture is a Greek word that means caught up. The Bible is very clear that the tribulation is a time when God released releases his wrath upon the earth and God's children escape his wrath so that we will not be here. The rapture happens before the tribulation begins. The only thing that is holding the evil from taking us into the tribulation is the Holy Spirit. According to 2 Thessalonians 2.7, it says, For the mystery of the lawless one is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is is taken out of the way. The only one that's restraining the spirit of the Antichrist and the Antichrist from taking his stage is the Holy Spirit. And it's because the church, meaning meaning the remnant church is still here. On the day of the rapture, the Holy Spirit will be taken up. It won't be as it was it is. We'll be, we'll be, we'll be entering in a different dispensation. The dispensation of grace will finish. So we as believers must understand that this is called the age of grace and once the true church is raptured you really won't want to be here as a tribulation saint as you will have to refuse the mark of the beast according to revelation 13 6. so i encourage you 
prepare the way for the coming of the Lord in absolute repentance, righteousness, holiness, truth, and complete surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ. Time is absolutely over. And even though we are praying and believing God will send a revival that will take place, that God will come in and bring a harvest before that day of the rapture, we must also be prepared because no one knows the day or the hour. And in the twinkling of twinkling of an eye, it will just happen so suddenly. So each believer, now I've been getting dreams and visions of this since I first became a Christian. That's what's made me go around the whole world warning people to prepare for his coming. It's not a time for lukewarm Christianity. It's not a time for us to be sitting on the fence, but choosing to be on Jesus's team, choosing to desire the, 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 the revival to come to, so that more people will be prepared for his coming. He must come to revive his church. So if this message, it's a bit heavy for you today because God is showing you the different aspects, the different aspects of his character. The truth is, just as he loves you, he will have to bring a time of wrath upon all those that rejected his way. So if you're hearing this message and you know there is something in your life that is not right, maybe it's an offense against somebody, maybe it's some small sin, whatever it is in your life, it is time to get right with God today. I want to encourage you today that you will come back to the Lord in deep repentance. The Holy Spirit is speaking to you today. The Holy Spirit is saying, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready for that day. And if that is you today, I want us to repeat this prayer today. Let us pray. So precious Jesus, repeat this, precious Jesus, I acknowledge today that you are Lord and Savior of all mankind. And today, I have recognized my shortfall. I repent and turn away from all sin. Please cover me with your precious blood and establish your word in my life that I may be found in righteousness and holiness and write my name in the book of life and baptize me today with the power of your Holy Spirit that I may be ready for your soon coming, that I may be rapture ready for your coming. Let me be found blameless before you today in Jesus' mighty name. Let me pray for you right now. Heavenly Father, I thank you for each person that has listened to this utterance today. Lord, it is a warning And it is showing the church that we also must be ready, that time is coming to an end and we know that it is it is getting closer. Lord, I pray that you would send revival, send revival to their homes. Lord, I pray that you would wake up this church. Lord, that they would even understand why we're doing these monthly fasts, not just to get your financial breakthroughs and get your material possessions, but that you would come to know God more. Yes, he'll provide for your needs. Yes, he'll do all those things. But ultimately, you can't take any of those things with you in heaven. See, when Jesus left, the only man-made thing in heaven are the holes that are in the hands and the feet and the pierced side of Jesus Christ. That's the only man-made thing in heaven. But what did Jesus leave here on this earth? He left his precious blood that's available to wash you of all your sins. And Lord, I pray today for each person. I thank you for your sanctification, your forgiveness, your justification. But Lord, I pray that you would consecrate holy vessels that are set apart for you, that they would understand the signs of our times, that they would even drive them into a deeper travail. Lord, praying that you will bring such a revival in this hour. Come and bless your people today as you touch them from the top of their head to the soles of their feet today. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. 
Amen. Hallelujah. This is Pastor Robert Clancy from Narrow Path Ministries in Perth, Western Australia. It is time to catch the fire of repentance revival as we prepare for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Shalom, shalom, shalom. And if you like this utterance, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel, Facebook or Instagram. Go to our free website, repentancerevival.com. So from my family to yours, God bless you. We love you. We are praying for you. Shalom, shalom, shalom.